If you want an excuse for being overweight, there's a lot. There's plenty of reasons to be overweight, and there's nothing. It's ultimately a choice to a certain extent. Our biology certainly plays into it, and we have to live with the biology that we've been given, whether we like it or not. But during this week of recreational, non-recreational eating, I've just been observing my own behavior towards recreational foods. And I define recreational foods as your primary motive for eating them is based on their taste. Um, and um, so I really just stayed away from spicing and stuff like that. Though I did have a couple meals that had spices in them and they were very savory and very tasty and I definitely noticed the difference between the raw foods that I've been eating. Um, not, and not necessarily raw foods because I, I find frozen foods to be very convenient and easy to use so I tend to use those a lot. So this week is this sort of, um, can I stick with it? Um, I've been allowing myself to be around other people eating whatever they want and just sort of observing, even cooking food that I won't eat myself. Um, and it's not realistic. Some people say, well, if you have the food in the house, you'll eat it. And there's a lot of truth to that. And one of the reasons why um, a three-course or a three-meal-a-day um, regiment helps in that is that you don't eat um, except during those periods of time and so it's unnatural and feels weird to be eating something um, or at least that's the idea of creating a, that taboo of not um, you have to sit down to eat and that's the idea behind my taboo in terms of that you have to sit to eat so it has been very successful I've been times I've been a little dizzy a little hung hungry and um, for the most part I haven't been irritable I've been actually surprised that I've had a lot of energy and I haven't been irritable. I've only worked out on average uh, 30 minutes a day. Uh, I did some swimming on Friday, but in general I'm not doing a lot of exercise, just doing very light, um, not overdoing any one thing. Uh, so I did add a um, protein uh, powder that has no sugar or any kind of artificial sweetener or nothing, no additives, it's a rice-based protein. and. Um, I did add that because I was noticing that my proteins were low um, and I do keep all track of all my foods based on my fitness pal. I uh, haven't been drinking any kind of um, uh, juices, just been water. Um, I have had tea and coffee and I have that on um, only black, nothing added into it. Um, and thus far it's been very effective in doing it that way um, and so that's the ultimate goal here seems to be working pretty well um, it, it makes you more aware of what you're eating and that's really what the goal is is to be mindful e eating you're eating for life and not living to eat uh, it seems to be a pretty interesting way of looking at things why am I why do I want to eat that food that whatever it is why do I want to eat it because it tastes good or is it good for me um, I did go out to eat one night um, it was late and I hadn't prepared anything to eat uh, we were in Aberdeen Washington and I realized just came back from the YMCA that I was gonna be way over when I should eat so I said I need to stop and eat something so I got rice and uh, vegetables and I, um, uh, the one thing I did do was my wife doesn't like, she had a sushi uh, called the Volcano, a very good sushi um, concoction. Uh, anyways, she doesn't like the, uh, the Japanese spice and the ginger that they put on there. So I threw that into the, uh, the rice I was eating and that was quite good um, but I couldn't see that those spices going to waste I really like those and they actually brought an ex extra I was like uh, well I didn't really want to bring more I just didn't want that to be go to waste but anyways I put that into my rice as well it was very good so all in all I stayed pretty much to a strict diet I was pretty good at sitting down although right after doing this video last week I ended up 
um, grabbing a banana and starting to eat it and I realized oh my goodness I can't believe what a habit that is so I put it down I sat down and I finished eat, eating it of course that was outside of a meal um, oh actually no that's right I think I did it for lunch it was close enough to lunch so I added it into my lunch so I finished the banana out my lunch time so um, that was one major gaffe um, also I found myself drinking water and I have a rule I have to sit to drink uh, it's just again it's be mindful of what you're putting into your body and I sort of set out how much I want to drink and I want to get that I want to drink that amount during that sitting anyways um, I, I sometimes find myself grabbing either is coffee or, or water at, at work and I'll, I'll take a sip and I go wait no I have to sit down to drink this anyways um, all, all, overall it's been very successful um, the one thing about punitive e eating, I did a little bit of um, right, uh, what I call adventure e eating, I guess. Uh, kelp, I really don't like kelp, and I had um, other thing was uh, sweet potatoes. Really don't like sweet potatoes, and of course I didn't put an anything on them, so just raw sweet potato. I did cook them though. I haven't really done any raw foods. I said I was looking at raw potatoes and um, just a little bit. It seems a little bit punitive. Um, at this point, but maybe at some point I'll, I will attempt to try different uh, adventure foods, as I think I'll call them, um, because they are good for, it's good to try a little variety into your body, um, so it's for health reasons, um, but definitely not taste reasons, to see if you can tolerate eating it. Anyways, the kelp was particularly hard to get down. Um, so it seemed a little bit punitive, and I kind of looked at the couple and go, mm, I, I'm going to do some more uh, to see if I can get used to it. Um, it's kind of like spinach for those that haven't ever tried just cook, cooking it in the mi microwave for a bit. I couldn't eat it without cooking it because it's just too um, too hard to ch chew on. It's too much like eating grass. Um, but if you put it in the microwave for a minute, it, it gets it a little soggy, and then you can kind of scarf it down. So anyways, uh, we're under 10 minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this. You can see, oh, I did want to bring up the weight thing. You'll notice I did not put the weight at the beginning of this video. Um, that's at the end of the video. And I wanted to point out the health. Your health is more than just your weight. And I wanted to make sure that I was emphasizing that because I kind of made a big deal about you know, losing X amount of weight by the end of the year. Um, those are empirical measures. They, they're something you can say, well, uh, it's something we all kind of recognize. And, um, uh, and there's certainly being overweight is, is a problem um, for health and for society in terms of the cost of med medicine, all kinds of things. Um, it's probably the number one health risk we have in uh, the world. Um, uh, preventable, that is. And even, yeah, I'd have to look at those statistics again. But um, anyways, because this is uh, the way I do this video, I don't have a chance to go and look up that statistic. I may put it in the link on the low bar if you are really interested. But anyways, this is week two. And um, now I'll put down the weights. Now that's an extreme weight loss, but it's an extreme weight loss because I had water weight and other kinds of just bad eating and that's the difference between good eating and bad eat eating is you shed a lot of weight so it's not really an extreme or starvation diet it's just your body adjusting to weight loss so um, anyways uh, week two we are beginning and I will tell you how I feel at the end of week two uh, and in the beginning of week three bye for now